Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Um, checking out this video here of me coloring one of the pages from our fantasy comic that is based on our current D&D campaign. Uh, currently working on the dwarf. His name is Ding and that is Matt Case's character. Uh, so yeah, so what I got going on here, I have, uh, as you can see in the lower right hand corner, I'm selecting colors. Um, I have a previous page that I colored up. That way I can grab the same colors and make kind of a color palette for the dwarf. Um, it's always good to make a color palette. That way you can use the same base colors and not deviate too much from what he looks like. Uh, so yeah, so what we got going on here is I'm creating a new layer, picking my pin. And then I go ahead and throw in my flats. Um, I'm trying to keep this super simple because I have a lot to do. So I'm basically gonna do a flat color, a simple shadow, and a simple highlight. So as you can see on the other arm, I'm coloring around, kind of making a circle of the area that I wanna fill in. And I'll grab the paintbrush and just drop that in there. Uh, it's kind of quicker to fill in large areas. And I'm sure that everybody has a different way of coloring. I just find that this is the easiest way for me. Um, I like to work with the studio pen. Um, it seems to just give me exactly the shading and style that I need. Um, then I come in and just add some uh, simple shadows. There's my shadow, throw it on the other arm. Kind of just trying to make them pop out a little bit. I always try to make a new layer for every section that I'm working on. That way I don't ever have the uh, mistake of coloring on the previous layer and messing up my work. I could have um, made the blacks darker, but I figured they're gonna they're gonna get darker when I throw the color on top of them. Throw in some shadows on the arm. So here I'm just uh, zooming in and doing more of his armor uh, back and forth to my color palette, making sure I'm matching up what the dwarf's colors are. Again, keeping it super simple. I find that with this style I'm trying to do uh, with the fantasy comic, I don't want to do a lot of airbrushing and blending. It's going to have hard lines where you can see pretty much three simple colors on each section. Now I'm making another layer for his beard. I'm gonna go ahead and outline the area that I wanna fill. as well hit those eyebrows since we have the same color of the hair. And here's where I'll throw in some shadows, trying to give some depth to the hair. You gotta remember also that uh, it's okay to deviate from the color palette you pick for your characters depending on what lighting they're in. Like if they're in a dark tavern, you know, all, I'm making all the colors more muted. Uh, if they're out in the bright sunshine or near a fire, you know, those colors are gonna change depending on what the lighting is or 
what the shadows are. So working on this helmet, I'm just outlining, throwing in uh, a new color. I made a new layer and that's my cat meowing. Throwing in some shadows. And what I started doing actually was adding more um, colors to the dwarf's color palette because he had not yet, his palette had not yet been made. So I was kind of making that palette as I went. So here I'm throwing in a lighter, a lighter gray kind of as a highlight armor, making that thing pop out a little bit. Create a new layer for the next uh, section, which probably will be his skin. I like Procreate, um, it's got some awesome features. I am very curious to start learning Clip Studio. Um, so I might be diving into that soon. I'm trying to pull out the full functions of Clip Studio and see what I can do. So then when I'm done coloring all the layers for a certain character, I like to merge all the layers together. Um, and then just move on to a new layer. So this next character, I'm starting on layer six, as you can see there. Um, he is our half elf, and his name is Mouser, played by uh, Dave. And um, this guy's got some cool colors. Now all these characters were originally designed by uh, Matt Case. Um, this is just my style on his original designs. Um, super fun to see other people's imagination of what our characters look like. Uh, so here I'm just coloring in his cape, uh, I should say his cloak. Um, throwing it over, again, keeping super simple colors, just a, a base color, a shadow, and a highlight. Uh, I really think with this style, that's really all I need. I don't need to get crazy with effects or shadows with airbrushing and whatnot. So here I'm just gonna color his armor. Um, I'm gonna wanna make sure that that armor stands out from the background, so I'll definitely throw a highlight on the top of that. Uh, you don't want the armor to blend in, so you can't, you know, determine the depth of the character. Uh, and again, my reference is another page that I've drawn, so I'll usually pull in my reference so I can see exactly what colors the character is. Um, since I don't have, these are all brand new characters, I don't really have them memorized yet. So he's got some kind of gauntlet on his left arm. So now I'm gonna throw in some shadows on the base color. Super fast, super simple. Keep in mind that we've got about 10 issues to do with this fantasy comic. Uh, we'll see how far I can get. So there's my highlights, separate that, make it pop out from the background. Now I'm grabbing uh, his belt color. I'm gonna make a new layer, throw down the belt brown. And that's my clock you guys are hearing in the background. So let me know what you guys think. You know, if you have any suggestions or what you think of my coloring style uh, or process, go ahead and leave uh, your opinions in the comments. 
Uh, good, bad, I can take it. Um, so currently we're working on the uh, half-elf uh, mouser from our D&D comic. Throwing in some dark shadows on his arms. Um, pretty much this is the same process I'm going to use for the entire comic. So from here on out, I'm going to just throw on some music and let you guys just enjoy watching uh, the rest of the coloring process. And I just want to thank you for tuning in. And again, any uh, feedback or uh, thoughts are always appreciated. Thank you.